you who joined the call this morning. Um, you've just gotten the recording message, so I guess I'm not letting or I'm not telling you anything that you don't already know, but let me say that this call is being recorded. And again, thanks for joining the OmniRide Hispanic Council meeting. My name is Holly Morello, and I'm the TDM program manager at OmniRide. And I'm going to turn things over first to my boss, OmniRide's chief development officer, and then he'll be turning things over to our director of operations and planning, Perrin Palace Grant, who is going to be giving the bulk of this morning's presentation. And then I will also be um, speaking a little bit towards the end and talking about OmniRide's TDM programs. So, Joe, to you. All right. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, if you are online and you are not muted, that would be great. Thank you very much, especially you, Miss Plu. If you could mute, that'd be wonderful. Um, so, yeah, good morning. I'm Joe Stainsby, Chief Development Officer for OmniRide. Um, thank you very much for everyone taking the time this morning to be part of the uh, our Hispanic Council meeting. Um, the first and most important thing is we do have a uh, live translation uh, being provided by uh, software we have called Wordly. Um, Miss Morello, if you could go to the, the second slide, um, that will show everyone how they can access the translation predominantly uh, in Spanish, but it is available in up to 23 other languages as well. There is a link to it that I have posted in the chat so if you click that it will take you to a website where it provides um live live transcription um to uh to everybody's uh whatever whatever you would like um to have it language to have it in so um that is uh our live translation handled uh i do want to thank everyone for coming to our the second of our kind of semi-annual uh mic um Hispanic Council meetings. Uh, this is one of our three mobility councils. I encourage everyone to go to our mobility councils website, um, which is where they will find a recording of this call and a transcript uh, alarmingly soon after we're done here today. So um, our uh, internal IT people do a really great job of getting that information up there quickly. Um, part of OmniRide's overall strategic plan uh, a number of years ago was to engage the community a little bit more and so we set up these three mobility councils van pool employer uh, and hispanic um, they meet on a uh, semi-annual basis um, to kind of pass along information that we think is relevant to that uh, those particular communities um, and most importantly um, to solicit feedback so uh, we ask you guys to to come as stakeholders that's why you're invited um, you know OmniRide is your guys's bus service and so we want to be even more of that and so we try to bring in speakers from the outside and internal when we can um, to to give you that information and to help feedback and help sh shape what we are doing um, we have a very specific opportunity opportunity to do that um, for you guys right now. So um, OmniRide is currently going through in, in its TDM department, which is Transportation Demand Management Department, which is uh, Holly's department. Um, it also includes our Vample program, which is run by uh, Ben Matters. Um, so we are overhauling our five-year plan, which up until this point, the state has always called our TDMP, which stands for Transportation Demand Management Plan. I apologize for dumping alphabet soup on everyone at 9.06 in the morning, but them's the breaks. So um, they have updated that and now it's called the CAP SP, which is the Commuter Assistance Program Strategic Plan. Um, it is a five-year horizon plan of how we would like to move that program forward into the future. We are required to update it um, every couple of years for those new horizons in order to continue to be a, a state grant recipient from DRPT, the Department of Rail and Public Transportation. So we have engaged a contractor, Kim Lee Horn, in order to help us update that. And we actually just kicked off with them a week to 10 days ago. So this is a process that we will be going through um, probably until the end of the fiscal year, so June 30th, and we will produce a final updated plan, which we will, of course, make available to everybody here, and it becomes a publicly available document. But it helps guide and shape our policy on, on what what we do in our TDM department, you know, the places where we're, we're looking at increasing our reach, different programs we might want to stand up, like a best workplaces for commuters program, how we want to work in and around the corridors that we have. And it's particularly relevant now, given that 66 has now come online in terms of that being a, a better commuter corridor now. Um, and so we have some changes to the plan. Um, part of that plan is working with Kimley Horn to basically solicit feedback from community stakeholders. And 
that's you guys so um i would encourage anybody um who wants to kind of provide any commentary on the process or would like to be involved to kind of email holly and lakeisha afterwards and we can make a note of that but it's also highly likely um that we will be putting out kind of a general call in the next couple of months for people to provide feedback uh you know it's these decisions are made by the people who put their hand in the air and say i'd like to voice my opinion we want your opinion we want to actively solicit this so um if you are on the phone today um and you would like to participate in that process and we hope that you do um then please make yourself known to holly afterwards um any kind of and she's put her email in the chat there so that's awesome so um any kind of engagement that you can provide, whether it's just in the terms of written comments, if you want to do that and just dump it in Holly's inbox, if you want to have a discussion with Holly and myself and maybe someone from Kimley Horn in person on the phone. We're happy to do any and all of those things. Um, you know, also, you know, if you're mo more comfortable doing that uh, in whatever your native language can is, we can make sure that that happens as well, whether that be providing live translation, whether that be, you know, you submit your comments in whatever language and we get that translated we want to make that as easy as humanly possible um to to kind of solicit that feedback so i i will climb down off my soapbox um and just say season's greetings to everybody i'm extremely appreciative that you've taken your time um whilst you know taking some time off for preparing for the potentially adverse weather conditions tomorrow to come and spend some time with us this morning um and i hope everyone finds something new and uh, that they can take away from this. Uh, and I will kick it either over directly to Perrin or um, to Holly. Perrin, I'm gonna give it straight over to you, but let me let me, first, let me say, um, I wanted to introduce Perrin Palestrant, our Director of Operations and Planning, and he's gonna be taking us through uh, the presentation. Great, thank you, Holly and Joe. Good morning, everybody. I'm Perrin Palestrant with OmniRide, and I'm here to provide a uh, presentation giving a, a brief summary, summary of the services that we operate and some of the new things that we've started or are looking at starting. Uh, next slide, please. Or do I have control? One second, I'm sorry. I'm having some issues. Moving to the next slide. There we go. There we go. Great, thank you. Um, so I'm giving more of an overview of a lot of our Eastern services um, because that's where we've had some changes with our local service. On the Eastern side, we have four local routes, uh, Dale City, Woodbridge, Lake Ridge, Dumfries and Route 1. And then we have one Metro Express route that serves the Franconia Springfield Metro Station from the Woodbridge area. Um, since 2020, in uh, right at the pandemic was starting, we've been running free fares on the local bus network, and we're continuing to do that at least through FY23, which takes us to June 2023. Um, right now, it operates every it operates seven days a week. We just um, made some changes in August to do that to run the local service not only Monday through Friday, but also both uh, weekend days. And then we have a, a large restructuring of the service that we are planning for some time in 2024 um, without really going into much detail because there's still a lot of work to be done as far as what the routes will do, what they'll look like, but there's gonna be a lot of outreach, a lot of public hearings. And then as we get ready to implement the service, there'll be even more outreach. So whatever the restructuring ends up being, we'll make sure that the public is well-versed on what we'll be doing. Next slide, please. This is just a brief uh, overview of each of our routes. This is the Dale City local route. Um, its main points are at the Omni Ride Transit Center and Chin Center. Those are the end of the line. And then it serves other um, landmarks along the way, such as the Prince William County Boys and Girls Club, the McCourt Building, and it serves many shopping centers, as long as a lot of residential along Dale Boulevard and Darby Dale Avenue. Next slide. Our Woodbridge A and B route, it operates as a loop. So in one direction, it's the A loop. So that would be clockwise on your screen. And the B loop is the counterclockwise route, but they all converge at the OmniRide Transit Center. Um, they largely serve the Route 1 corridor, Smoketown Plaza, Old Bridge Road, and the Potomac Mills Mall. Next slide. 
Our dump freeze route is actually one of our busiest routes in Eastern Prince William County. And that largely centers around the Route 1 corridor in the town of Dumfries. Um, it also starts at Dumfries at the Omni Ride Transit Center, serving the Fralazzo building. Uh, the uh, serves right near Potomac, um, the Satera Hospital on Opitz Boulevard. And the shops at Stonebridge is also a major destination for this route. And in our Route 1 local bus, it complements both the Woodbridge A and B loops as well as the Dumfries route. Whereas those routes deviate and go to the transit center, the Route 1 local bus stays on Route 1 the entire time, providing that connectivity from North Route 1 to South Route 1 and supplements the other two routes that operates along there. But it, it goes to all the, uh, it starts at the Woodbridge VRE station at the north end, serves all the residential and retail along the Route 1 corridor. It deviates off at uh, Powell's Creek and serves a lot of the residential east of Route 1. And then it also serves the south end along the, in the town of Dumfries as well. And then our Prince William Metro Express. Uh, this is our Metro Express route that connects Woodbridge to the south with the Franconia Springfield Metro Station. On the blue line, it serves the Route 1 corridor, Potomac Mills, the Horner Road uh, commuter lot. So it does a multi-purpose type thing where it can be used as a commuter service, but it also is a hybrid local bus service with local stops along Route 1. And it provides that connectivity at the Omni Ride Transit Center to allow people who live in the local communities to come in, connect to it, and then head up to the metro station to connect in with the either buses at the Springfield station or the metro to go to wherever else they need to go to within the region. Um, and I did see a quick question as I was flipping through. The Prince William Metro Express is free of charge. Just like the local bus, the Metro Express route is also free. Um, real quickly, discussing a brand new service that we just started this week. It is our OmniRide Connect. This is a, in transit terms, it's called microtransit, but it's a flexible on-demand service that allows us to go into neighborhoods that a big bus cannot go into. In this case, this, this is operating in the Manassas Park area, and it is replacing um, on June, January 30th, we'll be replacing an existing bus route that is underutilized compared to the rest of our services, but allows that necessary transit connection in with either the rest of our routes or within the zone that the, uh, that the um, OmniRide Connect operates in. And this is a picture of one of our vans. We have four vans in the fleet that we have branded and they're running around today. As we speak, two of them have bike racks, so you can also select when you book the trip to that you have a bicycle, but I'll go into more detail as far as how this works. The next slides. Um, as mentioned, this is operating in the Manassas Park area. And unlike your typical fixed route where you go to a bus stop at a fixed schedule, this one can be reserved on demand based on the availability. So you would go into an app, put in where your location is that's within the zone that the OmniRide Connect operates in, and then it'll let you schedule up to you know, 15 minutes prior to when you wanna leave as long as the van is, is available and it'll schedule you based on its availability. So if there is a van right there, you might get a trip right away. If the van is somewhere else and it's picking up other people, it may be a little bit longer, but it'll give you the option to accept the time that it's offering or allow you to select a different time. It's much like Uber and Lyft, but it's run by us at OmniRide. And instead of going exactly to the destination that you're going to, it is we have what's called virtual stop. So it'll take you to the nearest corner of the location that you're going to, just so it can flow similar to a bus, but be much more flexible than a bus operates. And it gives you real-time information. It shows you on the app where your van is, where you are. And then while you're actually riding in the van, you can trace where you're where you're going and we tested it out extensively last week and it's a it's a really nice system the app is very easy to use um in my next slides i'll go into more detail on those things as well next slide please karen i'm trying it's being a little slow today 
That's okay. I might be able to pull up my version if I need to. Let's see. How about that? Yeah. There we go. And this are the operating characteristics. It runs Monday through Friday from 6 a.m. until 8 p.m. Just like our local service and our Metro Express, it's fare free at the moment. Um, and then when the fares, when or if the fares do return to local fixed route, the cost would be $2 for each ride. Um, and right now, just because it's new and we're trying to get everything perfected, um, we're only allowing same day trips with the OmniRide within the OmniRide Connect zone. And as mentioned, um, the goal is to not have any longer of a wait than 15 minutes for people who are requesting a ride. Next slide. And the corner to corner service, as I mentioned, is designed so the route will come as close as it can to you, but not directly there. There may be some instances with certain businesses where it may actually drop you off at the front door, but primarily this is designed to pick you up at the corner and we have virtual bus stops. So there isn't a physical bus stop there. It, it would be similar to if you were waiting for a regular bus and there was a bus stop, that's how we're treating it with the micro transit. Once you book your ride, you select where you are and where you're going to, and it'll give you walking directions with how to get from where you're, you are to where the van will be. And then once you get out of the van, where you have to walk to to get to your final destination. Um, and it's set up to, to meet with the um, Americans with Disabilities Act requirements. So there's visual, there's verbal, there's everything to make sure that everybody can understand the directions and our customer service staff are well-versed on how to help passengers book the trip. So if they can't use the app, you can go through our website and you can also call in the customer service. And so there's three different ways that you can book your trip. Next slide. Uh, this is our zone that we've created for the micro transit zone. It's everything within the peach colored or orange that's on the screen. It stretches all the way up from the Yorktown village area all the way down south to our hub at the courthouse. So this allows people to connect in with our existing transit network or any of the um, dozens of places within the map that have been identified and approved for the van to stop to pick up and drop off people. And the great thing about this is it's completely flexible. So as we see demand shifting, whether it's people not using it in a certain area or using it more in a certain area or wanting to go somewhere else, we can move this zone around a lot quicker and a lot easier than we can with a fixed route transit because the fixed route, you have the operators that bid on the route, you have the printed schedules, you have a lot of different things that hinder you from changing things on a dime. But on a flexible service like this, you can certainly modify the route more on the fly and a, and a little bit quicker to be more reactionary to um, the needs instead of having to wait for a service change process to take place. Next slide. Um, and I, I guess that actually that just did it for me. I think this, oh wait, this is mine still, I'm sorry. Um, we have some other services that we also provide. We have on the go travel training for those that have never used the service before to help people understand what our bus stops look like, what it looks like on the bus. Um, we, we routinely bring the buses out to local schools so children can see how the bus operates um, we help out with anybody with a disability so they can see how the ramp works, how the wheelchair could be um, secured in the bus, making sure that everybody understands um, how to signal the driver to stop the bus, the verbal announcements that we have on the bus and the screen that goes across showing the stops. We can do it as a one-on-one -on -one or group training. Um, that way, you know, if you have a lot of people that might be interested in, in learning about it, we could take it out to a group. Or if it's just one person that's new to the system, our customer service agents can be reached at the phone number and, and website on the screen here. And um, we could set that up. It's a very valuable program. And we definitely encourage people to take advantage of it as well. Next slide. Then we also have our Wheels to Wellness program. This has been a very successful program 
that we utilize specifically to bring people um, who are eligible to doctor's appointments and to get prescriptions. So it's really built around taking people to healthcare facilities that may be otherwise not on a bus route or can't afford to take a taxi cab all the way to where their destination is. Um, there's qualifications for um, 80 years old or older. Um, and then also if there's uh, a disability and also it's uh, income restrict restricted and there's different regulations for that. We have a thorough um, review process that takes place uh, along with a form that's filled out either by a medical professional, social worker, there, there's a lot of different ways to fill out the form and then to provide the necessary information. Once we go through it and validate it, then we enter the person into the system and then they can book the rides. And it, those are either provided through Yellow Cab or the Nova Checker Cab. Next slide, please. Um, this is a summary of some of the places that we do go to with the Wheels to Wellness. As I mentioned, uh, doctor's offices, um, therapy, pharmacies, dialysis, um, any place that really helps that person um, on, on the health side of things. It's not meant to take people to the mall or to work or anything like that. We have other services that handle that, but this is very specific towards um, on health and uh, wellness. Next slide, please. All right, now this is Holly's section. <laughs> I think that takes it over to me. Um, I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about uh, the two uh, TDM programs that I manage, and then we'll open it up to Q&A. So while I'm going, um, obviously pay attention, but think about any questions that you might have for Perrin um, or obviously for me. Uh, the first one up is our carpool and van pool matching program. This is a DRPT grant funded program and it's called Omni Ride Ride Sharing and it is a free service for the residents of Prince William County. You can request a ride match through the Omni Ride website um, through um, a um, Omni Ride or an Omni Match application and you can also go to the Commuter Connections website and fill out a match request form there. We provide each applicant with a personalized transportation itinerary that includes a list of potential carpool and vanpool prospects, but also information about all of their transportation options to include the bus, the rail, and metro. Pre-COVID, the vast majority of the applications that we got were for things like folks that lived in Dumfries going to the Pentagon or folks in Manassas going to the State Department. And while a lot of those requests are starting to bounce back, um, it's interesting to note that a lot of the requests that we've um, been getting recently are for commutes such as Manassas and Woodbridge to the Target in Fairfax, or from Manassas to Fairfax Hospital, um, or from Woodbridge to the hospital on Fort Belvoir. We promote the ride matching program at transit fairs and employment locations such as the Pentagon or the Mark Center um, or the Navy Yard, um, as well as at more local events such as the Manassas Farmers Market or Chamber of Commerce events or even transit fairs at Prince William County employers such as the GMU SciTech campus. As a point of comparison, most counties in Virginia and Maryland have some kind of rideshare program. Um, but I do want to brag on OmniMatch just a little bit. Um, we handle a higher ride match request volume than most of the other jurisdictional programs, and our program always performs very well each year in the Commuter Connections State of the Commute report as having very high name recognition among Prince William County residents. And then moving on to the Employer Outreach Program, this is a VDOT grant funded program and includes services like emergency preparedness, carpool and vanpool formation assistance. Uh, we promote telework programs such as the state funded telework VA program. Uh, we also support biking and walking to work, alternative work schedules, parking management, transit subsidies, and employee commute surveys. And we work directly with employers in Prince William County, also Manassas and Manassas Park, to create and expand commuter benefits programs. We work directly with the employers and we can help their staff members improve their quality of life while at work and on the road. 
Um, the OmniRide Employer Services Program helps to contribute to healthy workforce development in Prince William County by helping companies offer high value competitive benefits programs that attract and retain top talent. The employer programs that I just mentioned are all free for the businesses in Prince William County, Manassas and Manassas Park, and we promote them through things like one-on-one -on -one meetings with HR, lunch and learns with larger groups, vanpool and carpool formation meetings, health and wellness fairs, transit fairs, Earth Day events, and employee benefits fairs. And an example of some of the outreach activities that I have done in the county include Earth Day events at Lockheed Martin, benefits fairs at Micron, transit fairs at the GMU SciTech campus, lobby tabletops at commercial buildings with multiple tenants, as well as telework webinars hosted by the chamber. I also wanted to mention that we started an employer council a few years ago, and it is similar to the council that you're, or the council meeting that you're on now, and that we have this twice a year. Um, and coincidentally, the employer council meeting is tomorrow, um, also from nine to 10. And I'll put a link in the chat for anyone that might want to join that call. Uh, VDOT is gonna be giving us an update on the I-66 express lanes. Prince William County DOT is gonna be updating us on major mobility projects in the county. And then someone on parents staff is going to be updating us on the Eastern side of the county restructuring that's gonna be taking place next year. And I will wrap up by saying that we would love to come out to meetings that you're holding with your constituents, customers, employees, and residents to talk about OmniRide and really to listen to what people want to share with us. We'll leave the slide up while we're doing Q&A with parents and my contact information. So please reach out to me with any questions you may have or with future engagement opportunities that we may be able to partner with you on. And I thank you for your time. And um, I will open it up. Um, I guess, are there any um, yeah. questions already? Um, I just very quickly before we get into the the Q and A, Holly, I did want to um, just circle back a bit to the to the micro transit um, <clears throat> for specifically for for this audience. Um, I, I, we have taken the best steps that we can in order to make sure that this is a service that is accessible, uh, you know, for people who are non-native English speakers, especially Spanish, <clears throat> um, especially given the Manassas Park area where this is operating at the current time. This is a uh, you know very high Latino population area. Um, so we do, uh, you, predominantly you access the service through an app, which to in a side way, answer one of the questions in the chat. The um, the app is called OmniRide Mobility. Um, if you find it in your app store and on your Google thing, um, in case you're wondering why it's not called OmniRide Connect, even though that's what the service is called. Perversely, there are other transit same, uh, systems out there called OmniRide and even called PRTC, which is funny because I think they're based in Hyderabad, India. But um, there, we had to choose a different name because the other app was already taken. So you can find it under um, OmniRide Mobility in the in your app stores um, but the predominant way of acts interfacing with the service is through that app um, and it, built built within Android or also within Apple are localization preferences where you can set your predominant language so you can have the entire app be in Spanish or Farsi or Urdu whatever you would like um, on Android and also um, on Apple the same thing goes you can access it through a web portal and the same preferences exist within Safari and Google Chrome um, and you can also if you are just really just not down with a technological approach you can also call our fabulous customer service agents um, who some of whom are native Spanish speakers and we do also have a language line if one of the Spanish speakers is not available and I believe we offer translation there in 13 languages including Spanish is one of them so we really do try to make the access to that um, as straightforward as possible who may be non-native English speakers so I just wanted to, to make that clear Holly go ahead thank you very much um, for that clarification and um, Joe if you've muted folks maybe we can unmute them now so that they can ask their questions live if they'd like, or they can put them in the chat. Yeah, weirdly, I have a mute all capacity, but not an unmute all capacity. So people will have to <laughs> unmute themselves. Sorry, there is mass muting, but no unmass muting. <laughs> okay, well, don't be shy, folks. Go ahead and unmute and feel free to ask any questions that you may have. 
Holly, uh, this is Kevin Lee. I'm one of the co-chairs of the Ambassadors Committee. I think it's wonderful that uh, OmniRide is offering all these services and some of which I was not aware of. My question to you is, um, where does funding come from for the uh, uh, the free bus um, program and the uh, ride share? I'll answer the ride share piece. The ride share funding comes from a grant from the Department of Rail and Public Transportation. And I'll let Perrin answer the question on the bus free fares. Sure. So the free fares, it's part of our normal budget process. And uh, that's a conglomeration of state, local, and federal funding that goes into our budget. So for the local bus with our fare revenue, it just gets part, it's part of the subsidies that we receive to cover that. All right. Well, I right, thank you both. You're welcome. Thanks for the question. And whilst other people are ruminating, I guess I can kind of expound on that a little bit. So, you know, we do understand that, you know, we, we charge fares on our commuter service and, and not currently on our local service. And, you know, we are foregoing fare box revenue, a few hundred thousand dollars a year um, in order to provide local service at no cost. Um, but there is a huge amount of money, perversely, that goes into collecting money. And there was there's a a point which we had exceeded where you're spending dollars to collect cents. There's also an an argument, um, well not an argument, a frank exchange of opinion in the business right now about the validity of charging fares on the local side because it's somewhat regressive. You the people who tend to use local bus service. Um, our folks generally of somewhat more limited means than maybe on the commuter service, and they pay a higher proportion of their income to access their, the, the local service than people who are riding on our commuter service, who in many cases, their ride to them is completely free because it is covered by the federal transit benefit in many of our cases. And so it seemed punitive to be able to continue that. And certainly our executive director, um, you know, Dr. Bob Schneider and our Board of Supervisors is very much of the opinion that in so far as we can continue to offer fare free on our local side of operations um, and kind of mobility as a service. This is a service that is provided. These, these people who use our service are oftentimes frontline workers, the critical people that we use to move around the county and provide the services that we have in the county, and they should be able to access work as inexpensively as humanly possible so that, you know, it's just a fairness thing. And so that is why we have done that. Our budgets are obviously per fiscal year. So right now we can only say that it remains fair free on the local side and consequently with microtransit until June 30th of next year. Um, but it is our budgetary expectation that that will be until the next fiscal year and the next fiscal year. We are planning on it being in there in perpetuity. And until such time as the county informs us that we will no longer be doing that, that is what we will be doing. And I did see a few things pop up in the chat. I now. did too. I think we answered Sophia's question, but just to make sure, what is the name of the OmniRide Connect app? Yes, it's OmniRide Mobility. And I just I have the app up on my um, phone, but I went into the Play Store just to look. There is something called OmniRide Mobility for drivers. Don't do that one. <laughs> Make sure it's just OmniRide Mobility. The one for the drivers is I think it's the one that our operators are using for their tablets. Yeah, and uh, and and maybe we can. This is all very new to us, and and maybe we can work on a way of differentiating that a bit better. Quite frankly, um, so uh, watch this space. But yes, until we get that uh, more clearly done, then just be careful that you're downloading the right one. <laughs> and then from Michelle, she asks, "Are there outreach materials that I can share that shows the routes, free fares, shares about the microtransit option?" And the answer to that is absolutely. Um, Michelle, and we will be in touch. Um, I'll reach out to you and we'll figure out a way that we can supply you with materials. And then I noted that Lakeisha very kindly put in the link for tomorrow's employer council um, in a uh, meeting if anyone would like to join. And if anybody else has a question, now's the time. Yes, I absolutely, Sophia. I am happy to do that. And I will just offer another plug again, you know, tomorrow is the second leg of our three legged stool um, for, you know, soliciting community feedback and really as far as the TDM team goes, you know, certainly the feedback that we would garner from people either on the call today, today, or at some point in the future and the same thing with tomorrow. 
you can always influence the service that we have in this community, but now is an even better chance because we are putting together that strategic planning document which is kind of the fire that our feet are held against as to what we as to what we do uh, in the TDM and mobility services department. So if you would like to be involved, we would like to have you involved. So please reach out to Holly. Okay, any other questions that folks want to unmute for or put anything in the chat? And Mr. Quintero will make sure that you get some information as well, as long as Holly has your information. There you Absolutely. go. There it is. I do. <laughs> Dan Ada. All right. Well, then not hearing any other questions, what is the rule, the five second rule? If no one asks a question for five seconds, then we don't belabor the point. But I do want to thank everybody again for joining. Um, we very much appreciate your uh, the time that you've given to us today. And if you think of anything after the fact, please, you've got my email address. Um, ping me and um, we're here. Thanks very much, everybody. And happy holidays. A couple, uh, well, almost a little bit over a week in advance. Take care. Thank you all. Thank you, everyone. Bye.